See the hummingbirds in the rain. Let me back up for a minute because they're all over here. I've got to fill the feeders really fast. Let me get my stuff done. Hey. I don't know if anybody's there, but I have to get these hummingbirds fed. Oh, you are there. Okay, I'm going to lift this for a minute. Okay, I only have two hands. Oh, this is the time when you can use three and four hands. Let's see if I can get this up and hope they don't come in the house. I've been filling these things all morning and they empty them as fast as I fill them. Let's see, is this one full? There's food in there. There's food in there, but here's the problem. There's no food in that one. Let's put this one out. Oh, you know what? Let's put that one there. Okay, let's try not to fall out the window. Okay, put that one there. Let's see what's back there. Let's reach. Let's see. Oh, that one's empty. Okay, so there's a little bit of food in some of those. I think they want this one. I'm going to fill this one. I don't know if you can see that one. You know what? I'll tilt you down. I'm not going to say hello to anybody for a minute because I need to get this done. And then I'll sit for a few seconds and let, uh, give you an update on what's going on. All is good. It is raining. I have not watered my garden in over a week. And the update too I wanted to give is my daughter's home. She's home from the hospital. She's with the family. I'm so excited. That was a real ordeal. Okay, I think I can leave this here as long as it doesn't get wet. Let me back you up a little bit. I don't know where they're gonna eat from first, but I, I just looked at these feeders and some have food and some do not. I may change that one out. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. Be right back. this one. I've just got to make sure that I want to feed them on ones that are not in the rain. Okay, I can put one there. That one's getting too wet. They're still feeding. I can stop for a minute. Let me see. No rain there. You know what? Let's dump this one and give me something else.
if we have normal rain, I don't mind filling them. If we have driving rain, then I can't fill them to the top, the feeders, because the rain that gets in there, I wonder if they'll go to that one. The rain that goes in there, they won't drink it. Okay guys, we have to figure out which ones we can feed you with, and which ones we cannot. We could open this, I think I'll leave it. Okay, I'll sit for a minute. It is cold. We're gonna be like 42 degrees tonight. Okay, let me lift this up. It is raining in Southern California. It should be illegal. No, <laughs> I don't mind the rain. I don't like the cold. So there they are feeding over there. Thank you so much, Roberta. You know, that was the best news I could get. She's been home for a day and a half now. And so far, so good. So she's not going back. And we'll see what happens. But they finally sent her home. You don't know how bad she wanted to go home. I am so excited she got to go home. See, they're trying to feed up there, and I may, I may do those too. But see how it's raining up there a little? I might take those down. I'm not sure. So I wanted to kind of do an update just to let a lot of you have asked how she's doing. She, um, she was concerned because, thank you so much, Bobby. And I know there's a lot more of you, and I just sat down. I haven't gone through she was concerned because she was still in a lot of pain but they explained to her i was there that you are going to have pain because you have a sore in your colon and even though it's healing it's still going to be painful so she's home she's happy and like i said i think all she wants to do is go home so i wanted to do an update on that and the hummingbirds as you can see are feeding heavy in the rain Happy New Year. I know and Gary and I are going to have our 28th anniversary. I've known him for 30 years. 28 years. I can't believe it. I don't know where Gary is. He's around here somewhere. He had to go do some stuff, he said, under the house. I don't think he's been flooded out. There's a hummingbird sitting up there. I'm coming in. Interesting today, I was outside in the yard. I don't want to move around too much because I don't want to scare them. They go out. And they, I saw hummingbirds. I actually got a little video of that. On the bottom of the lemon tree, on the lowest branches to stay out of the rain. That was interesting. The lowest branches. That makes them very vulnerable for predators. But, I mean, they're keeping an eye out. I might put a little bit in the top ones. Oh, was it teasers? Pleasure? Oh, you know, I, last time I touched somebody, I knocked them off. Uh, 30 years, congratulations. That is wonderful. Anyways, I thought I'd come on and wish everybody a good New Year's in case I don't come on. I'm freezing. I'm such a wimp in the cold weather. Give me over 100 degrees, I'm fine, but boy, the moment it gets into the 50s, I am freezing. Oh, thank you. That, that's, that thank you. I, I think so, I think so. We're very much alike and at the same time, very different. Look at that. I don't wanna move around so much. This way you can see them. See a little nest back there? Gary put nest there and sometimes we have wrens nest in those nests back there. Yeah, they're very anxious to feed because they're not going to find a whole lot in the rain. A cherry blossom girl. If you've got hummingbirds, now they have an internal clock, so they normally know when to leave. And if they're leaving your area, then, then that's, you know, that's what they're doing. They're migrating. But there will be some that may not have the energy to do so. And let's say... 
they're not as strong, they're, they're um, got an injury. If you see any, any of those, then yes, then hummingbird feeders up for them are good. I'm shaking this by holding it, okay. So it's up to whether you see them or not. If you see them and you know there's some around, then go ahead and leave the feeders up. And if they're gone, then there's really no use. This is their favorite spot because as you can see, I'll show you the roof. David Button, hello. See, they, they're under the eave, so they're out of the rain except for that top one, which they're trying to feed on that one. I'm debating if I'm gonna take that off. What I usually do is I put more on this side where they're sitting. Let me see if you can see. I can, I can hang some more even on the, um, I don't even know what this thing is. It's a cord I found in, in the garage that was Gary's and I hung it and I can hang some on there, more feeders, so I can move them around. I'm gonna to try to see if I can answer questions. If I knock anybody off, I'm sorry. Smitty Homestead, hello. Okay, let's see if we can go down. Let's see if I can say hello to everybody. Hey, teasers, pleasures, pleasers. Hello, Connie Davidson, hello. Chamaka, 36. If you're in Southern California, they might be around. You know, they're gonna look for feeders and they have found mine, so that's why they're here. Uh, Cherry Blossom, girl, you're from Texas. What time of the year is it? What time of the year is it? Why not? Well, it, it, Cherry Blossom, girl, you're in Texas. <laughs> so you and I are both in the winter. Yeah. We're both having the same season. Uh, Bobby Duvall. The bees have taken over your feeders now? Oh, so the hummingbirds are gone. We were up to hundreds. You know, I'm telling you, get the cheap Walmart feeders. They're about, they're under $4. Now these are the cheap Walmart feeders. I'll show you that in a minute. I made the holes bigger. But don't make the holes bigger and put them up. Oh, hi, Ben Dingo. Thank you. Let's see. Perez, uh, Roberta Perez. You know, I'm a Roberta, too. Um, Deborah McLaughlin, Pennsylvania. And she just started following us. Thank you. Love hummingbirds and gardening. They both go together so well. Mary, I am going to butcher everybody's name. Hagen Let's say Mary H. <laughs> I heard you guys are having odd weather. You were in some areas are getting warm when you're not supposed to be warm. And here we're so cold. We've had so much rain. They said we've had more rain than we normally do in January and February. So that's why I haven't had a water. Let's see, Bobby, you're glad my daughter's, let's say it. There's also hospitals, no place to be. Yeah. Let's see, I am so glad your daughter is uh, home. Also, hospitals are no place to be. I knew I was going to the hospital. You know, it didn't bother me. Stuck on a paper mask. Yeah, the nurses are running around paper masks. And I went to the hospital a couple times. They didn't let Gary in. There was one person at a time, so he sat in the car one time for a couple hours. Uh, let's see, Sherry, hello. So you have hummingbirds in the snowflake? Humming feeding with the snowflakes. The main thing is if they have food and they can find some place out of the wind and the cold, then they definitely will stick around. Okay, I'm not sure what that was all about. Years. Blossom. I think I got David Button. I already said hello. Smitty Homestead. Hello. Cindy Martina. Martina? Martina. How, how do you do that, Gary? M-A-R-T-I-N-I. Martin. Let's see. Michigan. My hummingbirds won't be back. But they'll be back in a few months, you know, and then the Orioles will start showing up. Males show up first. Though we'll have the Orioles here probably in March. Actually have the exact date. They almost come back on their exact date. Erica... Merchant. Portland, so you're, 
in the oh wow so you've got hummingbirds there they're putting that out in the morning do you ever land on your hands oh yeah they've landed on me i i mean in the, if i have a feeder in my hand they'll land on me but i i don't want to start with that but they will hello let's see i was hoping you would do a live barbecue you know, I was thinking about it and debating, and I thought, yeah, I might as well, because I wanted to let you all know that my daughter's home. It was like the happiest thing, and I'm, boy, was that stressful. Not lovers of truth. Okay, so Bobby, you want to talk about truth? I, I'm not going to get into all that. Have you? But now I'm just trying. I no, I'm just trying to. Yeah, I was trying to stay clear of. We, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things I don't talk about. And I know a lot of you want to, and there's nothing I can do on that, you know, so we could, we all just do the best we can. Oh, so Barbara, see, you're in Arizona. Barbara's in Arizona, right? So she'll be yeah, getting yeah. cool Say weather so. like us. You know, they're sitting up there. They're anxious because I'm too close to the window. Let me back up a little bit. I just don't want them coming in the house because I rolled the screen up. David, my elephant, is having a shower. Still love all truths. Did anyone? Okay. I'm um, trying to see if I've missed. I, I'm sure I've missed. I'm trying not to miss anybody. Why don't we talk about hummingbirds, gardening, the weather? So I just want to let you see the hummingbirds. They are here for the rain. They're here for the cold weather. Normally, they would be in the gardens a lot more this time of the day. What time is it? Two o'clock. Um, they spend a lot of times in the garden looking through the flowers, citrus. I showed Gary this morning, they were on my broccoli. <laughs> I don't want to go there. I, I know Bobby and Connie and Bobby's very, you know, I understand what she's trying to do. Let me tell you something, Bobby. <laughs> when I get cold, Long before all this started, I would put on a mask. So I've never had a problem with the mask. No, my daughter did not have COVID. What she actually had is her colon popped. She ended up, she had diverticulitis and it ruptured. Apparently when it ruptures, you know it, but it didn't rupture to the point where I had a friend that it literally exploded on him. So it wasn't that bad. She developed a hole and they caught it in time. They got her on antibiotics and she was on an IV antibiotics for over a week in the hospital. They monitor her, monitor, they were monitoring her. They weren't sure if she was gonna have to go in for surgery, but she was in the best place you could possibly be in case something did happen. Because my friend, I was talking to him that day, it, it, when his went, it literally, his colon busted in half. But they monitored her, they did her blood work, her blood work started coming back good. So now she's on oral antibiotics and everything looks good. So apparently the hole is healing. Now, will she ever have to go in for surgery? They don't know, but they know all about it now and what's, what the issue is. So now she's home. So hopefully it will heal. And some people, they heal. And you know what they told her, the doctors? Once she's healed, she has got to eat a lot of broccoli. In fact, I did look it up. They're looking for high fiber and tree colored, purple tree colored, green tree colored, all the colors, all the brassicas, they're really high in fiber. So she's gonna be on a very, very high fiber diet for probably the rest of her life. Pure pondering is not listening to me. <laughs> she's typing, she's working on something. No, no, it was nothing bad, it was funny. Elizabeth. Yes, I'm so, so everybody's okay. Lee Ann Millett uh, from Idaho. Snow, boy, it's so cold here. Sometimes I wonder if it'll snow here. Not yet. We're gonna be, they said about 42 tonight. 
and we have gotten colder. So Portland, let's see, uh, you were triple. I heard you had a very unusual, you had very unusual weather. Isn't all the buzzy? So you don't get any Allens in Vegas? Oh, don't make me name them all right now. We have, there's six hummingbirds that live, oh, from Perth. David Button's from Perth. Uh, six hummingbird species that live in Southern California, we have five. And the only one we don't have is the one I can't pronounce. Yeah, I'm not good at pronouncing it either. Um, try it, and on, then I'll try it. Calypso or something. It's a very, it's a, we should have it, but they haven't come this way. Ke so, Kelio. Kelio. That's the only one we don't have out here. We have a lot of Annas. The Annas are here all year long. Um, we've got Costas, but I haven't seen them lately, so they may have gone somewhere else. A lot of times they don't feed at the feeders. They, a lot of times they feed on the trees a lot, but if they're desperate enough, they'll come in. We have Allens and Rufus. Now they are almost identical. They're subspecies of one another. And then the black chin, which are real plain. Most of the, uh, wait, these are all mixed. They're all mixed. This is probably a young Anna's here that's drinking out of the ice cream container. But see, you've got right in front of me. I don't think you can see it. I've got, you've got Allens and Rufus sitting right next to each other. So they're not fighting, which is good. Okay, so Elizabeth also has Colin and had to go on steroids. Yeah, right now, the weird plant guy. Hello and happy holidays and happy new year. Yeah, they want her, not now, because now she's got to be on a very thin, Trish, thank you, um, a real light diet until she's healed. She's going to go in, I think, next week and, and uh talk to the doctors and then she's going to have to go on a very high fiber diet she said she's not even sure how she's going to do it you know she grows more broccoli than me and the reason she grows more broccoli than me is she actually takes her broccoli heads off and she does a lot of uh broccolini and she really keeps her plants trimmed when you keep them really well trimmed then they keep trying to produce and i leave a lot of the heads on and let it go to seeds for the birds So that's why I don't have as much, but I'm going to actually make a point to getting more broccoli going, especially Kitty loves broccoli. Okay, I think, I, let me see if I can find that. Um, question, where did these birds nest? David, if you watched our videos, you would, no, they, the hummingbirds nest everywhere. I've had them nest here on the kitchen window. Go find that video. That was amazing. Right there on that hook back there, right in the middle of this picture. I've had them nest here. They nest on Christmas lights. They nest on anything they can build a nest on. We've had them on Gary's banana plants. I can't even think of everything. Just hooks, anything they can find, cable wires. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, I'm hoping she heals and doesn't have to go back in for any surgery. But being that she's only had a bout once before and it's been uh, almost a year, they're gonna wait and see if a super high fiber diet will clear it up. Or you want to talk about how to keep bees away from the planter. I'm going to reach over alongside of me because if I reach over to the window, they're all going to freak. So I'm just going to grab something here. See this feeder? This feeder costs less than $4. Oh, I'm spilling. There's probably some food left in here. I may, you can find the videos on my website. On my, on my website. I don't have a website. Uh, on the YouTube. I'll tell her about Chinese. I haven't grown Chinese broccoli. I'll tell her about it. What you want to do is go to walmart.com and type in hummingbird feeders and look for their hummingbird feeder. It will be actually $3.67, something like that. And you have wasp too, but that's okay. Their feeders have a slit. The wasp and the bees cannot reach the food. If they can't reach the food, they're not going to waste their time. They'll try and then they'll leave. 
you'll have to swap the feeders out. Periodically, when it gets really hot here and the bees are starting to store food for the winter, like late fall, I'll end up with a bee swarm. And I'll be honest with you, I'm really super pissed <laughs> when that happens. I'm usually saying, yeah, it better not be your bees, I tell Gary. And then I've got to take all these feeders in and I have an extra set that have not been altered. These have been altered, I made the holes bigger. And I take them in, I put the feeders out with the slits. Now, once you've got the bees, the best thing to do would be to move the feeders, but then I'll really upset the hummingbirds. So what I do is I pull these in and you can't do them when there's all bees all over them, but you can do what I do. I have actually taken these and knocked them off the window and make Gary go get them later down there. And um, then I'll put feeders out with the tiny slits. They're very, very thin slits and they cannot reach the food. So you've got to get hummingbird feeders. Let me back up a little bit. Hummingbird feeders where they can't reach the food. There's so many. Let me, let me, put, let me show you on this real quick. See the, there's a bump here. Let me see. See that? They, you want to make it where they cannot reach the food. If this was flat and they could reach the food inside, then it won't work. So there's got to be a space between the food and where they're feeding from. And if they can't reach the food, they will not stay. That's the big thing. So you want to look for that. If you get a feeder that is shallow and they can reach it, then you're going to have a problem. So just swap the feeders out. After a couple days, normally they're gone because they tend to swarm when they're looking for food, the bees and even the wasps. So then once they're gone, I can put the feeders back. Usually it takes about two to four days and then I notice there's not that many around. Thanks for the tip, but Walmart hummingbird feeders. Okay, you should be able to find them online. And that would be US wide. And they're tough to find. Sometimes you go to the website and you can't find them. They'll show you everything else for $20, $30. All the, you want the cheap old plastic ones that you see in front of me. Most of these are Walmart feeders and then some of them are the other feeders. Oh, I can't think of the name offhand. Those are made in, these are all actually made in the USA, even the Walmart ones. So they're not, you know, they're not from out of the country. But you want the ones with the slits. You can get some with bee guards if they have yellow flowers, as long as they cannot reach it. You'll know if they can reach it. Try to find the video and you'll find it. You'll see, I, I showed it, you know, detail on that. Let me see if there's anything. You go out at dusk, they're probably to pull the feeders down. Yeah, you know, like I said, I have been so disgusted. I've literally, when the bees suddenly swarm here, like I said, it happens in the late fall when it's hot and they can't find enough food. They're not, I'll, I'll actually knock some of these feeders off. It's like two stories almost because the house back here is on stilts. And I'll knock them down and then I'll tell Gary, get them later for me. Bee moats? Uh, Robbie, haven't you made bee? I made ant moats. Yeah, I've made ant moats. What Gary has done, though, is he made it, he took a hummingbird feeder with holes, good holes that the bees can get into, and then he has hung it where he knows the bees are, and then they'll go to that one first, because bees will go to something closer than further. So we've gotten rid of the bees that way. So he's got his beehives down there, so he'll hang some down there with an ant moat so the ants don't get to it, and then only the bees can Yes, <laughs> and that's what I was trying to explain, Bobby. The hummingbirds don't like the slits, but you know what? Sometimes that's just all they can do. So I have two sets. I have some where I made them bigger, like that. You can take a, a metal knitting needle or a soldering iron, make them bigger, and the hummingbirds prefer that. But once you do that, yes, the bees will get in. So you'll have to have an extra set or a couple of them around that you did not alter and then switch them out until the bees are gone. You made, I, and then, I, yes, Bobby, I made this, like I said, I made this look bigger. No more humming, no, then that could be. I have not looked lately and that happens to a lot of places. Uh, They've, a lot of these stores have inventory like January 30th 
or 31st. And so they don't restock until they go through their inventory. So come February, you should be able to. So you should be able to start getting the hummingbird feeders uh, probably in the beginning of February, as soon as they do their inventory. But keep an eye out because if they get them in early, then you can start snatching them. I bought a whole bunch for $3.67. I bought a whole bunch. Like I said, for under $4. And as you can see, they really love these feeders. And they'll sit. Look how many of them sit together. Now, they do have the bigger ones. The one in the back there is a bigger one. It's double the size. But you don't need double the size. In fact, I only use the big one back there because it's so hard to get out that window to do that one. So I fill that up once a day. And then here I can do this all day because this is just my window. I haven't even opened that window. But this is just easy to go. Tea tree. tea tree oil on the feeders. Is that for ants or is that for bees? I know a lot of people have their ideas of what drives certain things away and I don't know, but if you try it and it works for you, let me know. Robbie, have you traveled to another country to discover new... No, don't travel anywhere. Gary, have I traveled to another country? Gary's traveled. <laughs> Yes. Okay, Elizabeth, have you ever heard that? I've I've heard people talk about that. I there I somebody told me to put something on a feeder and I did. I smeared it around and it didn't make a difference. So for me it didn't work. So all you can do is try it. Bees. Okay, you're talking about I think I did try it once. It didn't work for me, but that doesn't mean it won't work for you. So it's always worth a try. You never know. You might try something really odd that nobody's thought about, and something really odd might work. Think about what bees don't like. You know, Bobby, if you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. I don't have a problem wearing a mask. Masks don't bother me. If it's cold, masks keep me warm because I'm breathing in warmer air. I don't think I'm losing oxygen on it. And even cleaning, if we're working around, let's say animals or something, not dogs, but just working around, let's say you're working in a barn or something, you don't want to breathe all that dust in. And then we had fires here. I think you're over worrying about it. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Did I wear a mask when I went to visit my daughter in the hospital? My daughter wouldn't let me in if I wasn't wearing a mask. Um, yes, I did wear a mask. It's a paper mask. I have not taken a flu shot in many, many years because I personally am allergic to flu vaccines. My arm swells up and I told them I would continue if they can guarantee me nothing would happen to me and they couldn't, so they suggested no more. So since then, what I do, it's very simple, is um, during the flu seasons, I would put on a, I would bring a mask with me because you know I make my t-shirts with a big pocket, and if I went into a store or something and it was full of, you know, full of people, then I would put on a mask if I'm going down an aisle and a bunch of people are around. I put a mask on. Let me tell you something. Knock on wood. Ever since I started doing that, I have not gotten a flu. So, what is it going to hurt? Okay, Bernard Kung. Okay, so it works for you. So you just put the tea tree oil around, I'm guessing, around where the bees would feed, where the hummingbirds would feed. It's worth a try again. Yeah, but some of them will ignore it, and that's the problem. If they can reach the sugar and they're desperate, of course they're going to ignore it. I would just get feeders that have a really good bee guard. And like I said, it's not all year. They seem to do this certain times of the year when they're storing up for the winter. What is bad? They are bad for you. No, okay. I only have worn a mask when you go to the doctors. Okay. The shots, I don't, well, the shot, I'm just allergic to flu shots, so. And you know, I'll tell you something. Pretty much every time I've gotten flu, I've known exactly where and who I got it from. <laughs> That's it. 
No, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Let me, let me see. Cham, a ka. No, what I meant was, okay, sorry. See the feeder up on top there? That one is basically in the rain. So what I was trying to say earlier was if it gets wet from with rain and it gets diluted, they won't drink it. They'll taste it, but they won't drink it. So I need to change some of the feeders and make sure they don't get rained on. They do feed in the rain. They're feeding in the rain. They'll feed in the rain if the feeder was covered from the rain. They fly in the rain, but they won't feed on food that gets diluted. Hi, Cass. So that's what I was trying to say. So once the food gets diluted, too much rainwater gets in there, then they're done with it and they'll find a different feeder. I just changed all these. So these are all new. That's why I'm not gonna fill them to the top right now because if we get driving rain where it starts blowing and it gets on top and it gets in, then they won't feed on it. So I'll have to pull it in, dump it out and start over. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done anything with those two. Yeah, see they're test, testing it. There might be, there was a little bit in there but it might have water in it from the rain. And Alice, if you don't want to take shots, don't take shots. Um, I always tell people, do what you feel you have to do. Blue Roses, hello! My Christmas was quite... <laughs> My daughter was in the hospital Christmas. I spent Christmas Day at the hospital. But she is home now. So that's that's the main thing. That was That was absolutely wonderful. Oh wow, two months. I'm reading what you what you wrote, Blue Roses. Wow. Oh wow. Well, I hope that he continues to recover. I'm sure he, I'm I'm sure he will. Oh. I am so sorry. We we've been vaccinated. That's okay, yeah. right? Yes. And we have had our boosters. So I, you, I, I feel that you've got to do what you want to do, you know. And am I going to continue to get boosters? I don't know. I don't go that many places. I like somebody asked me if I travel. I think I just saw a bee fly by. I saw something fly by. Um, he's ninety-five percent. Oh, wonderful! So he's almost there. And it's scary. It is really, really scary. But everybody's got to do what they want to do, and that's that's the main thing. Augusto, how would you pronounce that? From Brazil. Augusto. Say that again, Gary. Augusto. Augusto. Hello from Brazil. They are probably fighting a lot because they're fighting over food. Here they know they've got enough. And you know what, let me let me not kid you. When it starts raining, they do try to take over the feeder. Sometimes you'll have a little um, Rufus come in and try to take over the feeder. But when you've got this many, they're basically pushing them away. But they are fighting because they're fighting for survival to make sure they get the food is what it's all about. Thank you, thank you Blue Roses. She is feeling better and she's home. Oh, Donald, I didn't see Donald, but Donald's there. Moving to a tree. move better. I don't know if there's a better place I can move. Oh, wow. Ugh. Thank you, Bobby. Donald, Bobby's going to play better. <laughs> she would, uh, I, yeah, I understand Bobby's 
frustrated and has her thoughts. And, and I, I absolutely understand that. But again, everybody's got to do what they feel they have to do. Okay, so teaser, I will just have to change my humming. Okay, so your feeder is under, I, okay, I understand it's in the tree. I, somebody's got it in the tree. That's all you can do is, oh, Sandra Montavo? How do you print Montalvo? She made a live feed. Hello, Sandra. Um, I forgot what I was talking about, Gary. <laughs> I'm trying to read and think at the same time. It doesn't work. What I'm doing is reading through everything. Oh, I see Bernard talking about the oil getting on their feathers. You don't want oil on their feathers. I think what they're doing, yeah, I see. You're putting the tea tree oil on the ports. Now, are you going to drive the hummingbirds off the ports? I don't know. You know, I'm telling you what works for me. Debbie. Edgar, hello. I'm trying to, this is just spinning too fast. Yes, Jennifer, everybody does have the right to their opinion. I do feel that way. Um, I'm, I'm telling you the best and easiest way for me, and I'm going to go easy, is just swapping the feeders out, and once the bees leave, I put the feeders back. Isn't that funny? They love their ice cream feeder. Make the hole small on the ice cream feeder if you've got those around and the bees can't reach it either. And they can't get in there. That's an anise. Aren't they gorgeous? They are so beautiful. Oh, <gasps> Gary, open the sliding glass door behind you right now. Okay, I gotta go get a hummingbird out of the house. I'll be right back. It's, I don't have the other window open and I'm gonna have to drop this here. So let's see. Did you see where you went? Nope. Oh, I went over my shoulder. I have another way of doing this. Let me open this window. They're trying to get out of the rain. If they can come in, they'll come in. So I'll open this window. And he probably will come back this way. I didn't put this, the netting down because it wasn't going to stay on long. No figure. You got the sliding glass door open? Yes, I do. Okay, he'll find it. Because there's no other windows open, so there's no other window. Let me just open this. Had I had this open, then he wanted to sit through, because that's what they do all the time. All right, so now I'm going to change this around. Okay. All right, I've got this, and I've got to take this feeder down. Let me see, i got to go look for a bird. No, there's no other place for him to go. He'll go off there. Because yep. he went over my shoulder, and he went that way. So as long as that window's open. Normally, I drop the netting. Put this out of the way. That's my stand. Now I've got this window open. So if they fly in, should, should I drop this? See what I have here? I normally drop this. You might as well. Yeah, just drop it. And then they can't fly this way. Isn't that funny? Gary told me when I put this tool up, look at the tool. He said, this will never last. It's been up for years. It's still there. I love my tool. Let's see it. Yeah, they fly in, but they fly out through the other window, so it's okay. And I don't want it. You don't want him in the house. Believe you me, it's not fun. What goes in comes out the same way. These are really easy to clean. I'm going to have to make more food. You can boil me water, Gary. Okay. Because I know I'm going to have to, this is going to be an all day thing. Oh, you would be in Chicago. You'd be colder than us, I know that. You know what? Let me see. Sundance, they'll be back before you know it.
Ooh, Sherry, Stacy R N, <gasps> tornadoes. You know, that's one thing we, they say we can have little ones, but nothing like you. Like there was a tornado they set up north, some, not up north, uh, Fillmore, but it was so small. And you go, oh, we have tornadoes out here, but ours don't do any damage. A tree limb sometimes. Okay, so Diane Cooper, Mary, uh, yeah, stay, I agree with Mary, stay safe, Sherry. Um, oh, better not be cold in San Diego, so it will be cold too. For a while, there didn't seem to be as many hummingbirds, and now, as you can see, they're back, so it depends on where they find their food. I don't know, you might be right, we might end up with a really cold winter. We've had them before. Oh, Southern Caribbean, Nicole Wildman. So she, you've got, oh, that'd be beautiful. You'll have hummingbirds there. Someday maybe I'll travel to go see hummingbirds. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Who would be taking care of these? Let's see, Christine has hummingbirds in Central Valley, California. Carrie, yes. how do you pronounce your name? L-O-U, I know, I know her name. Louv, Ro Rouse? Louv? Yes, Louv. Louv, hello Louv! If I can get them closer, if I, I can put them close, let's see, put my camera closer and then I can back up a little bit. You'll be able to see them better. This is my cell phone. I'm gonna keep an eye on that battery too. I wish I could, I can't control the cell phone as good. Let's see, oh, it's starting to really rain. <laughs> The swallow-tailed hummingbird. Oh, so you may have some that are even more aggressive than our Rufus. I think they're big. Too. They're big? Oh, those are the big ones? Luke. Okay, she said pronounce it L-O-O-V-E. Luke. I'm going to try and see if I can straighten this out because this doesn't look straight to me. Okay, it doesn't look straight. No, I'm going to have to back it up because you can't really see me. I am sitting here and I'm freezing. Okay, so the middle one's got something in it still. You know what I need? I need not to knock it over. I need my tablet. degrees. Okay, that's, that's just too cold for me. The nectar is freezing at 10 degrees. You'll have to wrap some lights or something around it that give off a little bit of heat. Sometimes that works. 
Um, you can get these pads. I, what do you call it? For for starting seeds, seed starter pads. You can get them really long where they're only like three inches wide by 12 inches, 15 inches long. You can wrap a feeder with that too, but you'll have to plug it in. species I have today. I know I've got the Anna's. I know I've got the Black Chin. Uh, Rufus and probably Allen's. That would be four. And I said Anna's, right? Anna's, Black Chin, Rufus. Black. I don't think the Costa's here, but they're hard to spot. They're purple. They're not magenta. They're purple. I'm going to say at least four. A hand warmer would work. You can get the ones that are battery operated that you can plug into a, um, oh my gosh, a power bank. That will work. Yes. I don't know how long they'll stay warm for, but they will work. warmers you shake them you crack them and you shake them and they can stay warm for five or six hours yeah that's right yes you can use that those are the ones that you you open them up and you shake them and yes that that's I've never done it but I have I haven't done it for hummingbirds but I've done it for keeping other animals warm so yes you can use the hand warmers Nicole, we do have issues, but you know, they, they work it out themselves usually. There's not much I could do anyway. When you have this many hummingbirds, it's really hard for them to fight. It's not like two people getting in a fight. It would be one person getting in a fight with a hundred people. It's not gonna work that way or more. Bye teasers, pleasers. Have a wonderful day. You see, I'm not that familiar with the species that are outside of the United States, but if they're, your water's boiling, but if, if they're, you know, if that's what they are, they're aggressive, there's not much you can do, but just try to get as many feeders out as possible. That's about the best you can do. A question. Okay, like this one, big fine. Yeah, you know that would that would definitely work. Now they're they are disposable, so once you use them, then you have to toss them out. There's another one you can buy. Oh, now I'm starting to think about. It. There's one you can warm up in the microwave, and you can put it back to a liquid form. And there's a button inside, and then when you hit the button. I forgot all about that one. It will get hot, but I think they only stay hot for an hour. Thank you so much, teasers, pleasers. Thank you so much. What I do when I'm making the hummingbird food right now is I'm still using the same ratio almost, but being that it's so cold, I use heaping cups. So when I'm making eight cups, I'm using two heaping cups of sugar. So the ratio is a little bit higher and that's okay. Just don't go too, too high, but, um, but that would work too. Yes, perfect.
And that is true. It won't it won't freeze as, as much. Where did I just hear that? I read somewhere, it was very interesting, on corn syrup. I made some peanut brittle. And I was reading the reviews on some corn syrup. And somebody bought corn syrup. They're against sugar. They don't use anything like that. They're an athlete. And he filled plastic bags up with corn syrup and he put it in the freezer. And he says it will get cold as ice, but it will not freeze solid. So you can use it as a, let's say, a cold pack on your knee or your elbow or something. So that's true. More sugar will not freeze as, as fast as much. You're right. The sugar will freeze. Think of popsicles and stuff, but that's true. Swapping out the feeders, yeah, that's what I have to do here. Just because it gets wet from the rain, you're swapping it out because it's freezing. Stormy Jackson, hello. Well, they'll be back. You must be on the East Coast. They'll be, they'll be back before you know it. You know, we're already going to go into the new year. Another couple days. Oh, you're in Florida. I see it now, Stormy. I, I'm trying to go back. I see it. Jennifer Lackey went to do errands. That's what I have to do. I have to go water my garden. Ha, ha, ha. April Fool's. <laughs> I have already picked from my garden this morning. Lube is listening with headphones. I went out before it rained. It was sunny this morning. And I made my green drink already. We had eggs with the, uh, oh, you're drinking. You didn't take any before? I told you to be careful because I really filled the jar when I made it. I made my green drink. I, um, I what do you call it, sliced up collared and some kale and made eggs this morning. I have to make six eggs because the dogs get two. It's the night. Nobody I know. I didn't think it's supposed to ring when you're using it. Normally my phone doesn't ring. Okay, so I already lost track of what I was saying. No, we I haven't made suet. I no, I have not made suet because we don't freeze here. I think that's a big thing on the East Coast or where you're and not the East Coast where it's snowing or cold. I have taken peanut butter, old peanut butter we had, and I smeared it all over sticks and pine cones and then rolled it in seeds and that's worked and hanged out in the garden and as soon as it gets warm it all melts off. <laughs> Or something is eating it. Probably a rodent. Okay, so they'll come back in Florida, I see, in March. Queen bee. Maybe you must have written something else. Oh, there I, there I am. I'm in Georgia. How can you attract more? What you want is you want them to stick around and have babies. And when they start having babies, you think about it. One female can have anywhere from two to eight babies in one season. And then their babies will remember where they were born and hopefully they'll come back. And that's what happened here. Because years ago, we had just, we barely had any hummingbirds. Kind of like goldfinches. Gary was so excited to see a goldfinch 20 years ago. Remember, Gary? And now we've got as many goldfinches as we have hummingbirds. So it's the idea of once they stick around, if they've got food, water, water as far as bathing and stuff, and shelter, what you want them to do is nest. And once they nest, then you'll have babies having babies, having babies. It's just, think of rabbits. That's, that's the way it is. Unsalted peanuts. 
peanut butter, unsalted peanut butter. Yeah, because I haven't put any of that stuff down. I just put out bowls of food and then I've got a table now in the garden where we feed, are feeding the birds under the table out of the rain. Did you feed the birds before? Yes, I did. Okay, good. The only thing, other thing to do is start getting more and more feeders out. And that's what I've got here. I've got feeders on the deck. Got to put some more. And then I've got another window with feeders. The more feeders you have, the more place they have to sit, then you'll have less fighting and more birds coming in. Boo e roo hoo. It's Sarah. Oh, that's easier. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. No. White table sugar is not bad for them. It's sucrose. That's the only thing they can metabolize. It's like cows eat grass. We can't sit and eat grass. Well, they need this. This is what their body can metabolize. So it's not bad for them. This is what keeps them alive. Put it this way. I've been putting out sugar now for the past, let's say, five, six years. All this. I would not have the numbers I have if it was bad for them. It would be the opposite. They keep producing more and more babies. So no, it's fine. And we've got some birds that you can tell are many years old. Let me look out the window. Okay, that's a mockingbird. That's the other bird. So no, it's not bad for them. This is what they need. And you can look it up and you can go to the Hummingbird Society too. And you can look all that up. This is perfectly what they need. They cannot deal with honey because honey, as infants, you don't get an infant human honey because of bacteria. They can't have that. No brown sugar because they cannot digest molasses. No powdered sugar that you would do frosting with because they can't digest corn flour, which is in, in that sugar. You only want white. It's got to be the processed white table sugar. It's not even raw sugar. They can't process that. They need the sucrose. That would be good if they have... They have a night light. I'm going to use the night bulb to keep it. Okay, so there's a bulb inside. Then if you can get hummingbird feeders with a heater in it, that would be great. You just have to have a plug. Pop it. P-O-P-A-T. That's pop it. My daughter's home. She's been home now for a day and a half. So, and I just... Uh, she texted me a little bit ago. She's doing good. She had they, they held Christmas for her, which was cute, because she was in the hospital Christmas. She didn't get to go home till she's only been home a day and a half. Hi, Monica. The Monica eighty two. And um, Meg, Meg Gray Root Wolf. Hello. Sundance. I already said hello to Sundance. DN, hello. Did I miss anybody, Gary? Yes. I probably you know. Jennifer Lackey, I think I did say hello. Oh, my hands are like ice. If you suffer from the cold, get yourself a throw. Walmart, Walmart's got throws. Got a whole bunch of electric throws. That's like a heat blanket, but it's smaller. You can use it on the couch and watch TV and keep your hands warm. So of course the dogs ended up with two of them. My daughter ended up with, she's got my granddaughter. I got one for my dad too. Hey, Gary, how would you put a heat throw out the window? Just throw it out the window and the hummingbirds can sit next to it. They're not that big. They're 50 by 60 inches. You could probably build something where you would drape it over and plug it and it can't get wet, really. I mean, you can wash it. Why can't it get wet? Wait a minute, you can wash it in the washing machine. If you were, if I was feeding out in the snow, I would build something and throw a heat throw over it. Make sure the plug end is not in the water area, up against the window, and then have hummingbird feeders under it. 
That's what I would do if I was if I had to. You're looking at me like, well, well you can wash it. The blankets are washable. You don't want the plug in in the water. But you'd have the plug in the window, and then you would have an area they could fly into. It would have to be open. I, I told you about my friend Fitzy. He had an electric perch. Okay. He got it from a guy that made it basically out of an electric blanket. The material of the electric okay, blanket. Okay, so he made an electric perch out of an electric blanket. Then you could make something out of an electric. See, a heat pad that you buy, right? Like a yeah. heat pad, it's too hot. Penny, Penny, that's my, she's going to be 16 in February. She was sleeping on a heat pad, but it was too hot. She didn't like it. So now we got her a heat throw, and it's just lightly heated. And what's interesting, if you read the instructions, which I finally read, it's actually warmer on the bottom of the blanket and cooler at the top because they say they want your feet and legs to be warmer, but you don't want your upper body warmer. So you've got different areas on a heat throw that's warm, but you could drape something over as long as they could fly in and out, like a big opening. I'm, we don't have to do it. We're not that cold. But if you had to, you could build an opening and drape it over and then just make sure the plug end is out of the rain and then brought into a window or wherever you've got a plug out of the water. And then you could have an area where they could go into like an open house and it would be warm. But you don't want to overwarm birds that are have a natural resistance to cold. They'll have an undercoat yeah. on them. So you, yeah, you want to allow them to acclimate. Right. It would only be like, let us, let's say something happened and we suddenly had a freezing and we saw all the birds suffering. I would definitely be building something. Are we warm enough to grow that, Gary? I think we could grow it. Yeah. Could, could took? Yeah. yeah. They grow it in, in Florida, and I, I believe we could grow it here. I haven't tried it, but I think we could, because we don't really get a frost. Don't look at me. I don't no, know. No, I you're know you're talking yep. to Meg Pretty Wolf. I hope they can hear me. Can you hear Gary? Because he's, like, not sitting next to me. Yes, they can yes. hear you. So, Dean, suet can kill the birds. It gets on their feathers. You know, I don't. Yeah, I can't. I can't say yes or no on any of this. So, you guys talk among yourselves. Because I've never used it. I have used peanut butter. I've had the birds hang on pine cones. Um, I put it in like a bush where they can stand next to the pine cone and rip it off and then the pine cone ended up on the ground and then the rats, I think, finished the peanut butter. Everybody was happy with the peanut butter. What if you did something else? What if you took bread? Bread. Mashed up bread. You know how they make cake pops? And you mashed up some white bread? I know white bread's so bad, but the birds don't mind. Could you stick seed to white bread and put that on a stick? What could you make it, what could you put on that that wouldn't make it sticky? I don't know if you could put a little bit of oil in it or something on white, with white bread. Then you could put your seed on that because they eat bread. Birds eat bread. Yeah, I, I don't know. Instead the, of suet. I don't, I've never. Now the un unsalted peanut butter, I think, is probably yeah. the best uh, solution. Okay. To but if you took white bread and you mixed a little bit of smashed up white bread with a little bit of peanut butter, you might be able to make something out of that and then coat it with seed too. Here, our problem was as soon as it got warm, the peanut butter melted. Yeah, I've never dealt with feeding birds that way. something. I'm going to shut off my tablet and go back on because it's got, it gave me this thing like if I touch something, something's going to happen. So I'm going to shut this off and go back on. That, that did not work. Okay, I hope I didn't knock anybody off. Whoa. I heard something big outside.
Okay, so Christine's talking about all the flowers. I got zinnias that are going to open up soon. Okay, so that's a good thing too. Meg, Grey Wolf, baby food. Jars of baby food. That would be perfect. Use that as your glue. Good idea. She makes, I make a birdie bread for my parrot out of wheat flour and applesauce. Just baking. That's very, very good. Yeah, I don't see any dot feeders either. <laughs> <laughs> I took them off and I didn't put them back. I think they're over by you. Oh my God. I don't want to hit the camera. Get out. And a dot feeder. I took it off but I didn't put it back on. I didn't make any more food until they get warm up. Okay, guys. Oops, I'm stuck to the tool. Yeah, there's a dot feeder. Let's see if I can fix that. Oh, this one is dripping. I knew there was one that was dripping. Let's see. Okay, give me a minute. He's looking around. Some of them really do like their dot feeders. Let me see if you can see the dot feeder. Uh, yes, you can. I think that one is dripping. Just a and flowers do absolutely you were all talking before about that they will bring in they will definitely bring in birds i bought some more flowers from home depot that's been two weeks already almost yeah because deborah has been in the hospital for over a week gosh it seems like i just bought them but it's been two weeks I bought something called, but it's a salvia. They call it cra killer cranberry. They've been feeding on that a yeah. lot. That's brand new. I haven't showed that yet. And we've got lantana all over the place too. Got plenty of that growing. Lantana? Yeah, that's got that. You know what it, what it is. It's not just your. It's not your window without a dot. I took it off and forgot to put it back. I haven't opened up both windows, so you're only seeing the one. Like I said, I only was going to come on for a minute and let everybody know that my daughter's home. That really does put a damper on your life. I'll, I'll tell you, it, it was like, oh, I was going to work on videos and and you're kind of like, well, you know how it is. Just, I don't know. Let's get through the year and then we're going to start 2022. I've got so many more ideas on gardening as well as hummingbirds. many places as you can and that that will work that will help I'm trying to figure out what's going on so the peanut butter is easier to get off their feathers oh that's sticky too I've never made that suet, so I don't have that much to say about it. Okay, so again, that's what I was taught when I worked with Wild Birds. So just passing on the information. 
flowers flowering still producing flowers too because we're not under snow so I guess if you're under snow you're not gonna have that many flowers I see what you're talking about, Dion. I've got a video on hummingbirds. I think I called it making um, blinders like you do for horses, and it does work. You can I made it out of tote lids, but you can put it anywhere. As long as they can't, they can only protect the feeders that they can see. Oh, the orange trees. Isn't that amazing? And we have so many orange trees now because of the wood chips that Gary laid out. They just are producing so many oranges. They're not quite there yet. There's, you can see that they're not as orange as, they'll, as they will be soon, but we still do use some. They'll be sweeter later. As soon as the weather warms up, they'll really get really orange. I'm trying to see if the feet are back there. Okay, I'm going to try to go fill the other feeder up. So tuck one yourself. Let's see if I can get that other feeder filled up. Oh, boy. And then they're all going to take off. Just had to put a block of wood under it. So I can move the planters back in right now. I'm going to do it in the rain. Well, yeah, but there's something I want to talk to you about before you move the plants back. Okay. So, well, I'm not moving it. No, there. when we go over there, I'll, you know, I'll show you what's going on. Okay, I'm not even sure if I'll go into the garden today. If it keeps raining.
Back. I'm back. I'm gonna go make food and get the other feeder. Let's see, I probably missed the whole lot. Okay, so Mary, you get them in May. Oh, blue, ro blue roses. Yeah, it, this is, you know, why would I want to travel to see others? Don't kid yourself. It would be nice if I could, but realistically, you know, yes, this is, this is really, this is enough for me, really. Thank you. And it is nice. And keep in mind, this wasn't like this not that many years ago. We only had a few. We didn't have the birds we have now. We've probably got 60 species of birds that are coming through here now so many of them are here all the time and we never had that many birds and that's not including hawks and now we have another type of hawk that i didn't even know we had we've got red-shouldered hawks now we've got a pair so a lot of birds come in here so it is really nice five months sandra huh I'll, I'll share mine with yours with you, but you know what? They'll be here before you know it. My last name is pronounced. Marketers. Um, Heaker, Debbie Heaker. My daughter's name is Debbie. Um, yeah, it was hard being in the hospital Christmas day. I mean, she was in the hospital before Christmas and then they were telling her they were hoping to have her home. She was already over a week there by New Year's and she ended up going home before New Year's, thank goodness. Thank you so much. I'm just so glad she's home, she's healing. And in case anybody is wondering, I think I brought it up before. It was not COVID. No, she did not have any virus. Her colon um, developed a hole is what it did. And it started to leak. Robbie, you are having sound problems. Not, maybe my battery's low. Let me see if I can tell. It could be my, I don't know. I'm looking at, this is my cell phone, so there's not much I can do. I'm sitting next to it. And plus I was in, further in the kitchen making hummingbird be, uh, food before.
See, now there's less birds. They come and go, and they'll go into the garden, and they'll hide in the trees, away from the rain. I see a lot of birds in the trees. Oh, Lou, that sounds nice. <laughs> Pamela Richardson. So you have oh, you have some hummingbirds there. Oh, cool. Sandra, right now, she's on a very light diet. She can have, um, I think they said something like applesauce, jello, yogurt, until it heals completely. I think she goes to the doctor next week. And then she's going to be, they told her, on high fiber. Once this is sealed, she's got to get on a high fiber diet. I think they said 35 grams, at least 35 grams of fiber a day. And they're talking about that coming out of food like broccoli. She grows a lot of broccoli, so she'll be growing more broccoli. So broccoli, collard, your brassicas are really high in fiber and they're good for you, no matter what. Wow, it's past midnight. Good night, Lou. Thank you, Sharon. I know, now she's home and healing the rest of the way. And the little one, her daughter, my granddaughter was really happy she'd come home. She wouldn't let the kids come visit her. The oldest one did. She didn't want anybody at the hospital because of you know the virus going around. So she told them to stay away. I went, uh, her husband went, my son-in-law went, um, and then Gary went, but they didn't let him up because it was only one person in the room at a time, so he waited in the car. Um, and then my granddaughter went. The oldest daughter went once, but she told her not to come back. She was, she's, she was really afraid, so. Yeah, I'm not sure why it would cut off, but you know, the phone was ringing before. It's rung a couple times. And I thought that should automatically be shut off. And that could have been what was cutting the sound too. There's nothing nicer than going out in the morning with a cup. Oh, you are so funny. I wish you could see this hummingbird. I'm gonna see if I can turn this for a minute. Sitting on the stand I made that that holds dots. And what are you, are you complaining? I know, I know what you're complaining about. You little brat. You know what that is? That is a Rufus, and he wants his feeder back. <laughs> I took it down because he was fighting with everybody, so I took it down right now, and he's screaming for his feeder back. Can you see that? Is that funny? And if I give you the feeder, you won't fight with anybody. That, that, that is just the funniest thing. He's screaming at me. You took my feeder. I took your feeder because you're beating everybody up. I'm going to put one feeder there just for you. <laughs> I'll give him back his feeder. So. Want, look at that. He's back. He want, and he's scream oh, he went and took off again. He is screaming for his feeder. You know what? I might go put a feeder back. I have extra feeders, so... And maybe I'll go put his feeder back. He came back here screaming for his feeder. Let me move this back a little bit. Sorry for shaking you. He wants his feeder back. Let's see if I can move this over. Yeah, he's back. But he was just, and then he come around the corner and he was beating everybody up. So he didn't have his feeder. So that was it. I have an iPhone 12. And I do really, really like it. 
And no, he wants his scooter back. He was yelling at me. Let me go get his scooter. Oh my gosh. Let's see. I've got an extra scooter here. He won't let anybody near it. Back. See if he comes back. Better heat. Over. Oh, he's still fighting with everybody. There's no feeder there, and he's still fighting with everybody. All right, we'll give him his feeder there. I'm not putting anything in those right now because they're out in the rain. And once they fill, of course, with water. See what he was standing on? This thing I made, you've probably seen it in the video. It holds dots. I put a dot here, here. I'll just put it out there right now. He was. He's been sitting on this screaming because he wants his feet back. Look at the rain. It's going to rain for days. See birds in the trees. Not that many birds. There was a whole bunch a few minutes ago. So we've got a couple more orange trees down there and a kumquat. We've got a blood orange. This big one here is a blood orange. Do you know the hummingbird? I don't know if you can see the hummingbirds flying around. Okay, let's go back over here. I'll let you know if he comes back to his feeder. He probably will. I wish I could zoom out more, but I can't do that. All right, I'm looking at a feeder, wondering if it's empty yet. Let me see. Has he got food in that? You know what? This is, oh yeah, that's empty. I don't know what they're trying to get out of. his feeder. You think, I kid you not, he's got his feeder. All right, let me put this back. Let's try to do this without knocking anything over. All right, so I got that back. I don't want to really want to put any, I'm going to take these two down. Take that down, and I might take that one down. And it's just, see, that's all water from the rain. And they got feeders in the garden, but they're not going to go to anything that's in the rain. Plus, it's probably a little warmer up against... Oh, sorry, I ran into my camera. It's, uh, it's a little warmer up against the house. Anytime you set up something even up against the house, that will be a little warmer. I don't see him, but I heard him. Where is he? He was just feeding out of this feeder. Let's see, I might pick this up for a minute. So he's got his feeder now. I just saw him feeding out of it, so I don't know where he went. Yeah, that one's feeding out of that. Okay, so let's put this back. Let me get my this is sideways. And that bothers me when it's sideways. 
Let's see, like straighten this out a little bit. Okay, so somebody's asking me a question. Let me take a look. Um, okay, you pro I wasn't in. I wasn't looking at the screen, so I don't know who's asking me questions right now. Let's see. Frugivore, F R U G I B O R E Bear. Yeah, he was yelling at me. It was, it, it, it was funny, but I can't stand when they're fighting over a feeder in one window. Um, Valerie Walker, I'm in Southern California also. Is there any way I can reach you directly? I haven't done that yet. So really not yet. Um, let's see. Sandra, I can tell you the difference from that usually. I have a Bully. Yeah, that was a little Rufus that was a being a bully out there, Sandra. Uh, Romney Del Rosa, hello. I didn't like the price either, but Gary told me to go ahead, charge it, get it. And you know what? It, it works for me. He's got a $100 phone. He bought that from Spectrum. It was like $109, and he loves it. I have no idea how to use his phone, but he's got a $100 phone. Let's see. Elaine Bartnick, she's here in Washington. That's true, better rain than snow, that's true. Yeah, he probably did go to his friends and tell him. He's probably sitting out there waiting. See, all these birds, that's what I want to show you, are here at these feeders. Now, there's not as many, so they're probably looking for something else that they can go. But look, nobody there. Feeder bites, nobody there because he's not going to let anybody go there. It's his. And they know it. He's doing his little song and dance out there, and they know it's his, and they have this one, so they're not going to bother. And they come in waves. You probably can see they do come in waves. They've got one sitting up on top there, too. A Google Pixel 4a or 5a. You know, I'm not even sure what he's got. We just got it off the of Spectrum, and he wanted something cheap. Gary, he really wanted his old flip phone, but that's kind of out. And it probably will be just as good. I wanted something that I could do more live videos on so i mean i had to learn how to use it my granddaughters taught me a little bit so i figured i went ahead and went all out this time and let me tell you i had iphone i had iphone 6 and i really like my iphone 6. you know i'll tell you something are you george and stephanie are you are you going let me ask you a question are you going to get chickens or are you going to raise chickens or do you have chickens? The video is, it is good. It, I, I'm, that's, that's why I went ahead and decided to go. It was actually Gary's idea because I was switching over to Spectrum. They wouldn't take my iPhone 6. I was with Consumer Cellular and I'm going to, tell you I wasn't happy with them towards the end and so I had to leave them so I had to get a new phone because Spectrum won't it's too old an iPhone 6 is too old so Gary told me since you're switching over and you know it's only $14 a month um, go ahead and go get top of the line and I'm very happy with it yep Valerie I'm trying to figure out how to do this is, is what it is and as soon as I figure it out I'm even trying to figure out on shipping. I don't want to really start shipping again. I know I really would like to spread the walking onions around. I'm trying to figure out how to do all that. I've dropped eBay. I was on eBay for years, and I have not done eBay for a while. Um, eBay's changed a lot, too. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this, because 
everything is so high. You know, the shipping is high. Everything is, I'm just trying to little by little figure all this out. Well, they might have left SEMA 74, but they'll be back. That's, and they will be back as the spring comes in and they're looking for a nesting site. As long as they have food, water, and shelter, they'll come back. Well, we haven't done any visiting yet like that, but maybe one day soon. The reason I asked you, George and Stephanie, is... Oh, okay, here you go. You speak sometimes about chickens buying chickens. We do have chickens. And what I want to do is... I want... I was going to do it last... I don't know what happened. I was going to do it last spring. I have a brooder that really cost pennies to run and you can make it so easy and so cheap and yet like a friend of mine went and raised one chicken with a heat lamp and it's like oh my gosh his electric bill is so high and you can make a brooder really easy i want to make a brooder this spring and show you all if you want to raise some chickens i can raise chickens in the house with a cheap brooder that you can make we have a breed of uh, oh, I can't even remember the name. It's a black chicken, and my daughter got it for us. And it wasn't something we really were planning on getting, but it was a Christmas present. <laughs> so now we have black chickens, but then we got some other chickens, so we've got hybrid chickens. Let me tell you something. We have more eggs than we could use, which is great because we've given to neighbors. My daughter picks up dozens all the time, and I absolutely love the eggs. So we're getting a lot of eggs. We're located in Southern California. Uh, let's say somewhere between Los Angeles and San Diego. How's that work? The main thing with the hummingbird, Rami. So I, I'm really good at butchering names. Um, De La Rosa is just start getting feeders out there. Try different areas. Try different things. You don't need an expensive feeder. I really, it, I haven't. I am not in any way affiliated with Walmart, have nothing to do with Walmart. It's just that they, they ended up with a feeder made by, is it Nature's, I, I should know this by heart. Why don't I just turn the blessed feeder over? Okay, First Nature. First Nature makes these feeders. There it is, made in the USA. I don't know if you can see that. See, made in the USA? This is their feeder. See the holes are big? Now the Walmart feeder is a little bit different, but they are designed for Walmart from the same company. And there is what I was gonna show you. He now has his feeder and he's not gonna let anybody near that feeder. That's why I took the feeder down before. I figured I'm not gonna bother with it. They these feeders are really the best. Now these I bought on eBay from some people that sell them. They're a little bit more money than the Walmart feeders. I like the holes on them. I like the style, even though they're almost the same. So I have both of those feeders. The holes are bigger, but really just get some extra feeders and just put them around. And the more feeders you have and the more comfortable birds are, knowing that there's plenty of places to sit, that's how you'll end up with more birds. And then once they're happy, they start to nest. I don't know, but you know, I thought we did a video on chickens once. There might be something. I thought Gary did. Let's see. Oh, I went way back too far. Let's see on this. Um, Gary's got. Gary's got four healers. And then my neighbor's got healers. She's got a sister of ours. We got her a healer a while back. So there's healers all over the place here. Okay, Mary is going back to work. I'm gonna have to go to work. I'm gonna go make dinner. I have leftover fried chicken and fried fish I made last night, but not enough for dinner, I don't think. Gary's a big eater. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna make a pizza on the side. Peanut brittle. I gotta make peanut brittle. Anybody like peanut brittle? I make a killer peanut brittle. Oh my gosh. We 
which probably will kill us if we keep eating it. No, I made it, and then Gary ate the whole thing. And I made another one, and I told him I can't make it. We can't do this. Yes, we had our blood work, both of us. Yes, our blood work is good, but I sure wouldn't go now. <laughs> but, boy, if you like peanut brittle, let me know, and I'll put a video together on peanut brittle. Oh, Sandra, you like peanut brittle? Oh, you know... I have I looked around on YouTube to see if anybody makes it the way I do it. I mean, it's basically the same recipe as everybody. It's so easy. You can alter it. It's so easy to make. And then Gary ate up the peanut brittle. I made it the other day. The way I do them, that's, nobody else does it that way, and I don't know why. A lot of people use all these whole nuts. They put them in too early. Then you end up with this hard peanut brittle. And when I made peanut brittle a couple weeks ago, Gary said, you know, I made it for me. He said, I don't like peanut brittle, I'm going to break my teeth. So I made it differently, and it is so good. All right, I'll get something together on peanut brittle, because this is for old people. <laughs> yeah, it's really easy on your teeth, and it's so good. It's more like a hard candy. So good. All right. Yep, they're perfect. Uh, if you can get the ones, I don't have any hanging here, but I've got those in the garden. The ones from Dollar Tree, 99 cent store, those hummingbird feeders are fine, and I use a toothbrush. Exactly, and that, that works perfect for washing them out because even though they do have a skinny neck, look at this, he's not paying attention, he missed it. And he's letting that one feed. I wonder why he's letting somebody feed. Now they may be siblings. Yeah, there's one on the other side. He's not fighting with anybody right now. Look at that. He's playing nice. Either that or he's off. Maybe he's a different one and he's chasing all the other ones off. Um, address, please. I don't give addresses yet. Robbie, I can't. Oh, he said, look at that. Now, it is a male. Now, I'll tell you something. When the females here have babies, he is sharing. When the females have babies, and I know this because they nested on my kitchen window here, they let their babies feed. Even though they'll protect the feeder, even when they still have babies, they let the babies feed. She knows her own babies. So you would have all the babies. But this, I'm... A little confused why he's not chasing everybody off. Now, there's another thing I've noticed I haven't talked about. What time is it? It's not that late. Let me double check the time. Okay. Uh, it's 3.30 and it looks like it's getting dark. I have noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, that when you have a bully that takes over a feeder, remember, in their little mind, it's a flower that's giving off tons of nectar. I have noticed that at night they stop the fighting, the quarreling stops. So I wonder if they think the flower is at the end of life and they don't protect it as much as at night. I don't know if it makes any sense and if I'm saying this right, but I have noticed that as the day goes on, they will protect it more and fight more during the day. But as the sun is going down, and even though it's not that late, yes, that's our rooster, that they stop the quarreling and then they'll all feed. Now that could be what's going on. It's coming to the end of the day. I don't know. He's just decided he's not gonna chase anybody. He's complaining. Oh, see, he's gonna feed with everybody else. Or he's afraid I'm gonna take his feeder away again. No, I I actually have seen this. As the day goes on and be you know, the sun's gonna go down in what, another hour and a half, hour? It's almost as if the fighting stops. Like they know there's only a few hours left on the flower and that's it, but all day they protect it. Okay, I know I missed it. Sounds like it is a good peanut brittle. Gary loves it. Oh, he loves it. I'll tell you what peanuts, so what nuts to get. It's, I'm, I have nothing to do with Walmart at all. Walmart has two, let me put this back. Walmart has two different types of nuts they sell, really cheap. I'll have to get that when I do the recipe. I use, there's a fancy nut and then the plain one. It's a mix, it's got peanuts and all kinds of nuts. That's what I use in my peanut brittles. He learned his lesson. I don't know if he learned his lesson, but he's playing nice. Thank 
the rooster got quiet. Uh, okay, so you've noticed that too, Bernard. I have noticed that for a while and I've been observing that. It does seem like that in the morning they feed real heavy and then as soon as it really gets into, you know, after the crack of dawn, then they start the, the protecting their feeder and then as evening comes in, it's almost like they know, think of it, one big flower that dies back. It's almost like they know it's at the end of life and they stop the fighting. Maybe they don't want to use up their energy before they go to sleep at night because they need all that energy until morning. So I'm not sure what would cause that, but I have noticed that. You know, blue roses, I would think that would be really nice. They know it's important for all of them to eat before nighttime to survive. I don't think they care, <laughs> but, but that could be. But I, I think it has something to do where they protected it for the day and they're pretty much done. And they're not gonna burn off all their energy fighting over that. Of course, we spoke too soon because they're all gone now, see? Yeah. <laughs> He's back to chasing everybody off. There goes the whole theory. No, I know. I, I have noticed that they don't protect it as much towards evening. Purple. Oh, cool. They like the insects, Christine. That, that's really cool. And that is true. You know, they feed a lot on my geraniums, and we all know that there's not much in geraniums. But... There must be insects in there, and they'll go deep around the flowers and everything, and they're looking on, I know they're looking for insects. So you had fighting that you've never seen before. I don't know. But the day before the recent cold snap. I mean, I, I do feel that a lot of animals know the weather before us, and maybe they knew something, and they were... For, you know, it all goes back to survival, so I don't know. But it's, it's good observation. and Stephanie. I think you're the ones that asked me about the wall the other day, the block wall. We did not build any of these block walls. It was done actually by the people that lived before here in the city. So it has been inspected and done correctly. I don't blame you, Sandra, at all. I know, they're just so beautiful. There's times I just sit here and stare at them and there's things I need to do. Like even now, I'm just sitting here staring at them and I should be doing stuff. Like organizing my videos so I can find them on the two hard drives I just bought. Yes, yeah, I didn't, I did not build any of these retaining walls. No, they were, they were here, long story short, one of them was not here when I first moved here and found out it needed to be put in so the city made sure it was put in since somebody cut a hillside that they shouldn't have cut. So it was done with regulations and everything. I mean, there's a footing on them. That's why you can't plant really up to these walls because some of them, they're come out six feet, eight feet. 
you've got cement, so it's really good to grow in totes around them. There's soil built up around it just from over the years, but yeah, no, I'm just glad they were done, the walls. I, yeah, I don't blame you, Sandra. That's right, you don't have them right now, though. And my thing froze. Why can't I not move this? I better not tap too much on this. Oh, there it goes. Oh, you'll get them in five months. That's right, you told me that. Yeah, I'll have to do my peanut brittle. I'm not a fan of rain. We need it, but I'm it's just I'm not a fan. And that's true. You're very good, Christine, because they go into spider webs. Well, they use the spider webs when they're nesting, and that's how they build their nest. And then they use the spider webs when they're not nesting to collect insects that got stuck in there. So they're taking the tiniest little insects out of there. a whole video on the different species that I've got here. Do not ask me to look for it. You'd have to find it, but I've got all the species, all the videos, and all the photographs and videos that you will see on our videos are all done here and all done by me. It's nothing I've picked up from anybody else. And if it would be, I would say. So those are all ours. I've got a whole video on all the species. And it is hard to tell them apart, especially the females. The females all look alike. So it's hard to tell the females on them, but I did do a video on specific five species that we have here. So George and Steph, you only get a few, you know, it doesn't matter what you get, as long as you get something that's really cool. I think the most common ones we have here are the Annas. I'm trying to see if that's a Costa, because he's very purple. He's down in the front. You didn't know that, uh, okay, the so weird plant guy. Yeah, they, they will hunt around. They'll go into the eaves, like even on the house, and you'll see them going around the house. And what they're looking for is, you know how spiders build up on the stucco, their webs up in the corners? I'm not going to move the camera right now, but I think. Like up on top there, right underneath out of the rain and the shelter, and that's where spiders build. Well, you'll see them a lot of times going up there, and they're looking around. And what they're looking for is insects, because remember, that's where they get their protein from, is insects. But yeah, they'll look for spider webs and plants. What they're eating is they're eating nectar. I mean, think they're not gonna get that much, the nectar they're getting here, they're not gonna get that much out of flowers. And then pollen, and then they're eating insects. So that's what they live on. Dakota. Such a scary smart dog. Oh, some of them are so smart, the healers. 
our last healer lived to almost 20. That was hard. And he, he was good. But yes, I... Oh, uh, let's see. Debbie, do you remember a dog named Skid Boot? That dog was a healer, purebred healer. He was on Oprah's show. That was the smartest dog. He didn't live that long. He passed, something happened to him, and he passed when he was like eight, seven or eight. That was one of the smartest dogs. You end up with dogs like that. Um, I had a dog. She was, I'm going to say half Yorkie and half Chihuahua. That dog was so smart. That's a story to talk about. Let's see. She was so smart, it was scary. It was, it was actually, like you said, it was scary. To the point where I, for, it took a year for me to decide if I was going to keep her or not. She was more like having a little person in the house. She knew everything going on. She knew exactly what she wanted and when she wanted it. She'd walk over to the refrigerator and she would point to things in the refrigerator. And if I didn't bring the right thing out, she'd bite me in the leg. Oh, God. But she, she was the smartest dog. She lived till she was 11 years old. Her mother lived till 11, too. And I know you know how that is. Oh, look at this, Donald. Donald is amazing. Thank you, Donald. But sometimes you end up with that special dog that is just, I mean, Kitty is different than all our other dogs, too. So you, you do end up with sometimes something that is so special. Oh my gosh, I still miss my dog. Oh, I miss her so much. And Penny, who is now going to be 16 in February, is Dinky's daughter. And she doesn't have, she's not the same as her mom, but oh, her mom is amazing. Count you in on peanut brittle. Oh, and you know, I make it in the microwave. You know, there's a lot of microwave ones out there. And it was like the first time I made it, I'll tell you, it didn't come out and Gary loved it. It was soft. It was chewy and Gary loved it. But now I know the true secret on how to do it. And there's, you can't even make a mistake. Even if you make a mistake, it's still good. So I'll have to get something together on that. And Donald is amazing. Yeah, healers are really smart. And so you've got to, I mean, like the healers we he, we have, I'm going to be honest with they're with Gary at all time. I kept the one that I was going to keep for myself. I thought she'd be in the house with me. No, she wants to be with Gary because they're, they're like herding dogs. And that's okay. He's in the yard. He does his thing. He's out there doing the chickens and everything right now. And they will be at his side the whole time. And they're very protective of the yard. So that's the way they are. They're very much like farm dogs. But then you end up with some of those that are just amazing. It sounds like you have one of those and really where they understand everything you're saying. That is just amazing. Oh, I'm sorry you lost your cockatiel. That was one of my first birds. Cockatiels are amazing birds. My first bird bought from Farmer's Market. I wanted a cockatiel. My neighbors got a, had a cockatiel when I was little and it used to walk out in the street with the dogs. And I always said I wanted a cockatiel and I got myself a cockatiel. Uh, they are beautiful birds. So smart. Somebody wrote they lost their other pet and I missed it. I was gonna say something. Oh, Sandra, I'm looking. Oh, quick, I saw an insect that looks like a stick. I forgot its name. You probably had a stick insect. Um, there he is. Oh, praying mantis. And they they can attack a hummingbird. The ones we have here really aren't that big. I saw something somebody wrote. And I was going to, it was something about they lost their gerbil. And I was going to, it got past me too quick. Something about gerbils. Um, and now I can't find it. So if I missed it, I'm sorry. Somebody wrote something about their gerbil that passed. No, I can't find it. No, oh, I've had gerbils. 
funny, funny pets to have. I'm thinking, Bernard, where you are, you probably have praying mantis that are much bigger than the ones we have here. E.I. Hello. There are walking sticks. My daughter's got some walking sticks in her garden. I'm trying to think if we've ever seen them here. I've seen praying mantis, and ours are quite small. But there are walking sticks that you can have in your garden. Non-native. Oh, there's Garden Alive. And I agree with you. The ones we have here in Southern California, they're small. They're not going to try to go after a hummingbird. Hello, Lynn Markman. Oh, did you lose your gerbil? I'm sorry. Okay, so it was Meg Gray Wolf. Meg Gray Wolf. You lost your cockatiel in April and your gerbil this past weekend. I'm sorry. Told you the story about the cockatiel years ago oh years and years ago i had a i had some baby cockatiels and this guy comes to me i'll tell you a story so he calls me up oh, this was i don't even know 40 oh wow i'm gonna really date myself 35 40 years ago he calls me up and he says i have this cocktail i want to get rid of can i use him you have a baby cockatiel for sale he said can i use him for credit i have told this story and he said, will you give me, I'll give them to you, you know, give me $5 credit. Well, I don't remember what the story was. But anyways, he brings this cockatiel, and I want to see the cockatiel. Don't open the bag. Don't open it. He wouldn't let me even look at the cockatiel. He said, it's in there. He was like, don't look at it. So he takes the baby, and he leaves. I take the cockatiel out. I looked, I peeked. It looked fine, healthy. Took it out. Bird sat there all day. Beautiful male gray cockatiel, normal colored cockatiel. And then I put him in a cage, he just stood there staring at me. And then I went to change his cage, to do something, in the, and he started up. And I thought, what? And he spoke so clear that, let me tell you something, I had to get that cockatiel, I had kids in the house, out of the house. If he got upset, it was, F you, F you. I'm not kidding, and he was as clear as could be. He had such a filthy mouth, and there was no doubt what he was saying. It was the most clear talking cockatiel I'd ever heard. So, uh, so I put him up for sale, cheap, and some college guy comes over, and he said, I heard you got this I said, look, I'm going to have to tell you, this cockatiel does not say anything nice. And the guy left with the bird, and I get a phone call from the guy. This bird hasn't stopped. I said, I know. He said, do you have any more? He wanted to know. It's the only one I've got. And I don't know if I'll ever see another one like that again. Oh, they are amazing birds, cockatiels. Just love the way they sing and dance. And, you know, you can, especially the males. The males are always more um, talkative and more vocal than the females. Okay, so you don't have praying mantis there. Okay. No. You can have one cockatiel. You know, a lot of birds, let's, let's back up for a minute. A lot of your birds are actually better if you have them as pets singly. Because if you have two, depending on the bird, of course, every bird is an individual. But if you have another bird, then the bird will relate to the other bird more than you. So if you can give the bird a, a lot of attention, you are actually better to have one bird. If you want it to be more talkative, then you get a male. The females really don't talk that much. The males are the vocal ones, they're the ones that are courting and singing and they learn to talk really, really good. So do you have to have two for a pet? No. Are they gonna get lonely? Not as long as you're spending some, some time with them. They don't need a ton of time. They're happy in their cage, playing with toys and getting their food and everything. But you'd better off to get one than two on cockatiels. Oh, good bird. Cute. 
sun conures are absolutely beautiful, beautiful birds. I remember when they first came into the country, it was like, wow, the most amazing birds to see. Gary's not here. He's out there with his healers. They're not talkers. I had a Yorkie years ago when I was in my 20s. That I had her for 16 years. She was a talker. You could talk to her and she would talk back. No, they don't talk. They bark. They're barkers. They, they bark and let him know anything going on. But they're not talkers. I know exactly what you're talking about. They're not talkers. Gary had a friend in Australia, he was telling me that, I think it was a healer, that he would go over to the house and the dog would talk to him, you know, like, rrr, rrr, and he could sit there and have a whole conversation. So, but no, these aren't, that would be nice, but they, they're not talkers. My parrot says, let's go, Brandon. Oh, so cute. Parrots are amazing. Birds are amazing. Look how quiet. The birds are quiet. The hummingbirds are quiet. No, Gary's not here right now. Oh, cool. I miss talkers. My girlfriend had a Yorkie that was a real talker. Would talk to me all the time. Not to anybody else. I'd go over there. And the dog would just carry on a whole conversation with me. And she used to laugh and laugh, my girlfriend. Talkers are so much fun. You're absolutely right. Uh, see, uh, Debbie, you're absolutely right. Because you are basically, I'm, I'm going to use the word mate, but you are the one that's important to them. So, perfect, Debbie. Bill Moore, how do you get rid of bees? Oh, you're late on the conversation. Uh, no, the thing is, bees normally swarm feeders at certain times when they're looking to store food. The best thing I do personally, there's a couple things you can put another feeder out for the bees away from your feeders, which Gary does. But the other thing too is I swap the feeder out with a bee proof. And I do like the ones from Walmart. They're like $3 and 60, 67 cents or something. And you don't change the slits. You leave the small slits. The hummingbirds aren't that thrilled with it but they'll use it but the bees can't get in and after a few days when the bees are gone because the bees will remember and they'll come back the next day once the bees know they can't get into the feeder that's when you can swap your old feeders back but that's the best way to get rid of bees is to put a feeder out that the bees cannot get into Oh, that's cute on your Spitz Collie. In interesting, so she was in charge. And that they don't have that. I heard that Patreon account, I don't have a Patreon account, that you can do things on Patreon account and you can zoom and do different things, but you can't do that here. But they keep changing things, YouTube. They came up with the membership thing, which I do want to try to go, at least go on once in a while live on the membership, like when I'm just working in the kitchen or something. Um, they keep prompting me. You have to do something for the membership. They should come up with something that you can select people and zoom in or allow them to download something. They're, they're going to they're gonna come up with something. You watch and see YouTube. They're changing things all the time. Or E-L. Ah, uh, six feeders. 
and two hummingbirds. That doesn't add up. There's something wrong with the mask. You're going to have to put blinders. I have a video on that where there's, you're going to have to make it where they can only see one or two feeders. See that now there's a little guy back there right now. I don't know if you can see him. This must have moved. He's trying to protect the feeder in the back. He's on the top. I don't know if you can see him there. And they do try, but there's too many birds here. So when you have too many birds, they can't protect it, but he's trying on the back. The blue bucket, that's just the hummingbird feeder. I don't know if there's any food in it now. They were feeding out of it. It's a ice cream container, and I've got videos on that, and that's the hummingbird feeder. Uh, going back to the six birds and, I'm sorry, two birds and six feeders. You should be able to put blinders up. And then if they, they cannot protect something, they cannot see. So you're going to have to change that around. You may have to separate your feeders if you've got room. But I use a tote lid, and I've done that in the planters. And this way, they, can't, they can only see one. I mean, if you block it, they can't see it, right? So if you block something, they can only protect what they can see. And you're going to have to kind of analyze the way you've got them set up because six feeders should not be controlled by two birds. One feeder, I showed you before on the other window, can be, but not six. Okay, Debbie, you don't remember Oprah having a healer. It's not Oprah's healer. It's not Oprah's healer. She brought the guy on. I think he did something on some place. Uh, and he he was invited on her show and his dog he was a farmer i think and his dog was called skid boots that dog ended up doing so many tv shows it was a healer and it wasn't his dog it was a puppy his wife got and he was i don't want to use the word babysitting but he was playing with the puppy one day she wasn't there and he was talking to the dog and he noticed that the dog understood pretty much well, what the dog did was the dog was relating to his voice. So he would tell the dog, come, and then stop, and the dog would stop, and then a little bit more, and then the dog would stop. And he could control that dog to back up and to do things. It, all I know is the dog's name, I don't remember the guy's name, but the dog's name was Skid Boot. She had him on once or twice on her show, but he was doing a lot of things. He got himself three or four more healers, but they, they interviewed him a few years back, and none of the other healers are like Skid Boot. So he could not find another healer like the one he had. Oh, my tablet's battery is going. Um, when they sit on top of the feeder, they're trying to protect it. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to use my... Let me move my chair back. Trying to use my tablet instead of, I can use the phone. Problem is I touch my phone and I end up knocking people off when I don't mean to. So I'm gonna go get a battery charger for my tablet if I can. working. I had to get a power bank for my tablet. That's what I'm answering questions on, my tablet. Now, Oprah didn't have a healer. Oprah had copper spaniels, and, and then she had some lamps. But this was a guy she had on her show. I don't know if you can find it online, but the dog's name was Skid Boot. Uh, he named it, I think. I, I don't know. Oh, your healer grabs your pant leg. That's what healers do. 
because that's what they they do with the cattle. They snap at their, their feet and they get the cattle to move because they're cattle dogs, as you know, by their name. So that's, yeah, they will do that to some, some people and some people don't like it. Ours don't really, I don't have any problems with ours snapping at our, our ankles. Not the healers. Okay, so yours perch on top. So, I mean, he's perched on top right now. Let me see if I can. Oh, you can see him on top. He hasn't really fought with anybody. He just wants to make... No, see, he pushed um, a different male away. Okay, what? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I missed that. Um, Debbie, you had to take her for training because she was grabbing your pant leg all the time. I hear a mockingbird. I don't see it, but oh, I, of course I see him. He's out the window. My goodness, Sandra. They can be snappy, and there's not much you can do. I'm, I'm lucky that none of ours do that, but I have heard that all from different people. I'm going to wrap this up soon. I think I'm going to walk through the garden and see if there's anything I've got to go get for dinner tonight. Oh, I do. I'm making pizza. I've got to go get my herbs from the garden so I can go make pizza. So I'm gonna wrap this up in a second. I'm gonna go check on the bird seed that is in my garden. Usually when I see a lot of birds, I don't see that many, I saw some a few minutes ago. They start hanging around here in this tree, then I know that the seed is out. It's so gloomy outside. Oh, leftover ham. Okay, the video, your, which video? Is this on the peanut brittle, Sandra? <laughs> I am afraid to touch anything on my phone because I end up knocking people off and then they get mad at me. If I try to scroll and read what everybody wrote, oh, and it's not even coming back. There it is. Leftover ham. Um, I think you're talking about the peanut brittle. Yeah, I'll have to get that together. Maybe I can get it together and then do one live. Look how damp and gray it is. This is Southern California. There's my new flowers. Yes, the peanut brittle. There's my new flowers. See right there? They're called killer cranberry. Nothing wants to go out there. It's too wet and cold. You can hear the hummingbirds. I can hear them all. There's a moss on the trees. We don't usually get that wet that long that we're growing green moss on our trees. There's a mockingbird. Not that anybody's interested in mockingbirds. Where is he? Okay, now I don't see him. Oh, there he is. Beatrice Anderson, hi from Maryland. Yeah, see the mockingbird? There's a mockingbird. He was screaming before. So I can zoom in, but I can't zoom out enough. And then, of course, the hummingbird. So, so wet. Oh, you are so welcome. I'll try to do this more often. My battery's going to go on this soon anyways. Look at this little guy He's sitting right here. I put this up. I don't know what this is for. I don't want to shake it. See what it is? It's rubber, kind of like a rubber. I just shook it and knocked them off. And I put this up because it's out of the rain, so they can just hang out, and they do. Now, the only reason the clothespins are there, you're, somebody's going to say, why do you have clothespins on there? Because what I'm doing is I'm taking some of these feeders, and if I wanted to put 
I don't want to do this and fall out the window. But what I could do, okay, I'm not going to, I am going to end up falling out the window. And there goes one of my hummingbird hooks. Um, I can put this on here when it's raining and I can slide it down. Whoops. Now that can hang there out of the rain and I can put another one there and another one here. This is empty already? There's a little bit left. And my hummingbird just fell. I'll have to have Gary find, find, find it. It's just a little hook that goes here. And then I can do the same thing over there and put a second one out that window. So that's why I've got a clothespin. Because let me tell you something, it's not that easy to get it when it's sitting in the middle. Now I can get extra hummingbird feeders out of the rain because here, see this one gets wet. You can see it on the PVC and the pipe. That's rain water. So there's no use putting hummingbird feeders here because they'll get wet. And then this is the hibiscus. Oh, there's the woodpecker. Look, 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 look. Let me see if you can see the woodpecker. Where'd he go? There he is. Yeah. Right in the middle. That's a nuddles. He's on the other side. Oh, don't be so shy. He comes here every day and he, there he is. Yeah. Can you see the woodpecker? I know it's blurry because I'm really zoomed in. I can't see him. I can see him. There he is. And that is a Nuttles. Where'd he go? And off he went. He comes by every day. He looks around the tree. He must find something there. And then you got the hummingbird sitting in there. And normally there's a dot there. So there's no dot in there. And then I've got a dot here, but that's pretty empty. So I gotta do that one. And then the hummingbirds are fighting in the trees. But I'm gonna get some more feeders out here, out of the rain, because see here, they'll be in the rain. So that's, that's why I've got clothespins. And now you, now you know why there's some clothespins there. Anything pretty much here on stays dry. This stays dry because there's an eave, a roof eave above that. And see, he's using the one I just put out. I don't know if you can see that. No, they're not 10 feet apart. They're literally inches here. But here they're not fighting. So I'm going to get another. I can hang a hummingbird feeder here if I want to. I'm going to hang another one here. You know what this is? Oh, no, this is a wire. This, I think, is a car antenna. It's stuff I find. I think it drives Gary crazy sometimes, the stuff I build. He'll, he'll, he likes doing everything just perfect. <laughs> and then I'll be putting stuff together with, like, bubble gum and, screen, and string. <laughs> it drives him crazy. I'll have to take you down to the, I don't know if he's actually got chicken, they're not really chicken houses, they're just little little buildings he's built around and he wants to build one in my garden. He's promised me that he's gonna build me one in my garden because I like to have chickens in the garden. We just have to be careful because he's got the roll bars around the property and that's to keep the coyotes out. And that's what the healers do. The healers keep the coyotes out and the coyotes would get into chickens if they were just in a barn right in the middle of nowhere. They might try to break through. So we have to be careful with coyotes. I do, I do make it work, but it does drive them crazy. I, I, it does. And, and you know, it drives, I'll be honest with you, he's not here, it drives me crazy. Because I went and built something and I was gonna do a video on it. And I, I'm sure the neighborhood heard me because I'm gonna be honest, if you come out of a loud family, me and my sister and my brother, we're loud. I come back outside and he has come, let me see if I'm zoomed, okay. I, I come back outside, he's completely rejected what I did. Why? Because he made it better. I said, this is my garden, but he made it better. So that was the end of that. I don't remember what it was, but there was something I put together, but he could do it better. It's not that it's better, it's sturdier, it's gonna last longer, but it's like I said, I haven't, he hasn't touched any anything here in the window. So this is like, a, like I said, a car antenna. This is something he had in the garage. Oh, I'm gonna get off here. And I'm telling them how you take my stuff apart sometimes and make things better. And what's wrong? Oh, and um, 
And so, no, you haven't, you haven't done anything here in the kitchen window, have you? This is my screen. He knows better. <laughs> this is my screen. And, oh, you have to go down there and get my hummingbird fell. It, no, it's not a theater. It's just a little decoration. Oh, I see my other decoration. I didn't even realize it's gone. I see it down there, my pink one. Gosh, I forgot about that one. It's a green metal hummingbird. And it just, it's just hold. Oh, he went. He must have gone to get it. It just, I didn't know my other one's down there. I was wondering what happened to it. Yes, a lot of things fall out the window. I don't see it though. My dots end up down there sometimes. Usually when I'm gonna go put them in there and then I miss it and it falls out the window. Gosh, it's noisy. I'm gonna have to put more feeders out. But anyways, I forgot what I was saying, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, we all, we have our different way of doing things. Okay. Which I know, I should be very grateful, shouldn't I? I should be, I should be. <laughs> And you know, he, he's, he's not the type to give gifts, but he'll do something. Like for Christmas, I got a new faucet in my kitchen. That's just the way he is. He went and bought a faucet and put a faucet in it. And it, it he's, that, that's just the way he is. He is, and he is a tinkerer, and he likes doing things right. And he does his, it, it's just the way he does things. We do things differently. Neat, freak, and very precise on my garden stuff. Is like, <laughs> hodgepodge. Oh, there's Gary. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm trying. I'm hitting something. You see what? I didn't know my pink one's down there, too. Yeah, I didn't know. You see it? The hanger. <gasps> the hanger. hanger and everything. I forgot that fell off the window. That must have come off the magnet that I took down. I completely forgot about that. How does the DirecTV dish look? It's not blocked. That's our DirecTV dish. It looks good? One's got water in it. That's why we're losing local channels then. No, oh, it's full. Do you have to empty it yourself? Yeah. Hmm. That's what I'm thinking is going on inside. Yeah, maybe. He said he lost yeah. his... Cups are a little... He is a keeper. He is. It's just that sometimes I can tell when I tell him leave my stuff alone. Alone, it's just killing him. You can see he wants to redo it. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for dragon fruit. They're all gone. Oh, see, he's, he's he is still guarding his feeder. And to a point. Oh yeah. See, he just took off with something. All right. Well. I think I'm going to go in the garden before it gets, it's not raining right now, so I can go in the garden, I'm going to go get some basil. On the deck, I've got sage and basil and parsley and onions. You know, I've got everything on the deck. The only thing I don't have on the deck to make pizza, it did stop raining right now, but it's supposed to keep raining, is I don't have rosemary, but I have that in the front yard too. So I can get rosemary from different places. I actually can probably get most of it off the deck. All right, I'm going to put a few more feeders out, out of the rain. I'm not going to put anything up here because it's just going to get wet. And he got my little hanger back that hangs here. It's a hummingbird hanger. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that other one was down there. I didn't miss it. looking at me. They're coming right up to me and looking to see if I got something else. These are Anna's. Thank you, Sherry. It has been fun, hasn't it? It's just been cold. I want to leave, but I like when they feed out of the dots. I get a kick out of that. The cheapest feeder you can possibly make. You could use any container that's shallow enough for them to get their beak in. 
Thank you, Donald. Thank you. Jamie's country living. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so everybody's going to run through 27 degrees. It feels like it's 27 degrees here, but I know it's not. But I'm shivering. You can see the camera is shaking. I'm cold. All right, everybody have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I'm going to go make Gary a pizza, and then we're going to eat the leftover chicken and fish that I made. And I'm going to get some more feeders in here because they need a feed heavy before the sun goes down. David Button, later, Miss Birds. Yes, thank you. Again, Donald, and thank you, uh, Blue Rose. Blue Roses, thank you everybody. 64 degrees. I We're colder than 64. I know we're colder than 64. I'd be happy with 64, but 64 is okay. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Um, oh, oh, I hit the button. Donald, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And I guess that's it. So... Have a good evening. I'll come back soon. I always forget to. I always look up there looking for the camera when it's actually there. Bye, everybody. And I'm going to go get my stuff done here and get more feeders out here for the night. Get this whole thing down. I've got to put the screen down and let the hummingbirds do their thing before it gets dark. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Gary, yell goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.